Welcome back. We're talking about the violence we've been seeing in Israel and the occupied territories in recent weeks. As I pointed out before the break, even top Israeli generals have attributed violence to the occupation. So when does that 55-year-long occupation ever end? The last Israeli prime minister who supported a Palestinian state in some form and was part of the last serious negotiations with the Palestinians is a man who joins me now. Ehud Olmert was prime minister of Israel from 2006 to 2009. He went to prison in 2016 for 16 months for bribery and obstruction of justice. And he's now out with a new memoir well, this year called... We'll come to you. We'll talk about that in a moment. I just want to introduce your book. He's now out with a book called Searching for Peace, which he says he wrote almost entirely from inside his prison cell. Ehud Olmert, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, let's start. I want to talk about your book in a moment. Let's may start may, with the may, news. May, may, will allow me just to say a short Please. sentence. Yeah, I was convicted for accepting illegal political contributions to my political campaigns. I denied it when it happened. I denied it since then. But this okay. was the accusation, OK? Just for the record. Thank you. Got it. Thank you for clarifying. Let's talk about the news. Israel has faced horrific terror attacks in recent weeks, more than a dozen people killed. But do you accept, as some Israeli generals have, that as long as there is an occupation and there is Palestinian despair and there is no solution, no two-state solution, there will be horrible violence of the kind we keep seeing? It won't end. First of all, there is nothing that can justify <clears throat> the kind of uh, Agreed. terrorist uh, terrorist violation, uh, violence which uh, took place in Israel in the last couple of weeks. If you ask me fundamentally, can there be a solution other than a political agreement between us and the Palestinians, which will allow the Palestinians to exercise their fundamental rights for self-determination? My answer is, as yours, I tried everything I could while I was prime minister to reach an agreement with the Palestinians for precisely this solution, a Palestinian state in almost all of the West Bank, actually in all of the West Bank, with minor modifications, with swaps of territories, but in all of the West Bank, more or less in line with what was in 1967. Yeah. And uh, I don't believe that there can be any solution other than this. It has to be the solution. It must be the solution. I criticize the okay. Israeli government for not doing enough or for not doing almost anything in order to advance the chances of negotiating with the Palestinian Authority. But the terrorist attacks against Israel go far beyond the lack of solution. You can't deny, so and I'm sure many, that you will not deny, that there are very extreme fundamentalist radical groups within the Palestinian community, not only amongst the Palestinians, in Iran, in other places, which are committed entirely to vicious terrorism. And they are doing it not because only of the political situation. So, it's so let, me, long before let me jump in then. And, OK, and so let me jump in there. As, you, as you've made the point about Palestinian uh, terror and extremism, let me just jump in here, because let's talk about the recent violence. Whenever Israel attacks Palestinians, or Palestinian civilians in particular, we're told, well, it was self-defence, the other side of terrorists. I want to show you a video of a Palestinian woman last Friday uh, in the midst of the chaos and violence being attacked. The Israeli newspaper Haaret says this video, quote, shows a police officer beating journalist al Asus with a club. She was left with a broken arm. Have a watch of that video. Look at that. How is that defensive in any way? How can you be OK with that kind of it's unprovoked not, violence yeah. against unarmed civilians? I'm not OK with this, as I'm not OK with other things which are done by irresponsible, sometimes reckless uh, reactions of uh, Israeli uh, military or police people. Just as I'm not uh, done with uh, all the violent uh, attacks against innocent Israelis by Palestinians, the, the guy uh, understood, understood. Yeah, I mean, me when, when I talk to Palestinian leaders, I can address their violence. I'm, but you are the former prime minister of Israel. I'm saying to you, when you look at multiple videos of Israeli police officers assaulting unarmed Palestinians, we can both agree that's wrong. Uh, Shouldn't those the, the, officers be punished? No, not, they should be punished if it will be inquired and they will be found guilty of uh, using... Uh, excessive power unnecessarily, they should be punished. There is no question about it. 
I wish that the Palestinians that are kill, killing Israeli, innocent Israeli civilians will be caught and punished by the uh, Palestinian authorities, but there is no chance that they will do it. I mean, so let's just be clear, Ehud Olmert, and the most Israeli is police officers and soldiers are not punished for excessive violence. Most uh, human uh, rights uh, groups would uh, say impunity uh, is the norm in Israeli security forces. That's not the view of Human maybe, Rights Watch, Amnesty and others. Maybe, maybe. I can see that you are very aggressive. It's all right. Against me, that's all right. We can handle it. But let's be... I just want to get the facts it. out there. And uh, yeah, okay, I know we're on okay, a time I, delay. Let, let me just say what I want to say. Uh, uh, let's be honest. There are many violations which are unnecessary and which should be punished by Israeli police forces or military forces in the territories. It's always in the context of some kind of violent riots which are starting by many people. They are not dressed in military uniforms. Therefore, in many cases, they are militant. They are using Molotov cocktails. They are throwing stones. Okay, but this is where I have to jump in. I asked you specifically about an unarmed woman who was hit on the hand. I'm asking you about a specific... Medi, 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 I'm asking you about unarmed Medi, civilians. That's all I'm asking you about. If you don't want to condemn that, yeah. that's your choice. No, I, I... Excuse me. I condemned it. You don't Great, want to let's move on then, because we're not going to... Let's, let's move on then before we run out of time. Hang on, hang on. When I add to my condemnation also the lack of any measures taken by Palestinians against their own militants, with, which are attacking Israeli civilians. That's all. With respect, so Ehud Olmert, fair, with respect. You, you need to be fair. With okay. respect, I, I, need to, I need to jump in here. I'm not Palestinian. I don't speak for Palestinians. If you want to debate the Palestinians, you can go do that on Palestinian TV. I'm here to talk about Israel, as you're the former Prime Minister of Israel. 15 That's years right. ago, you warned in a newspaper interview that if a two-state solution doesn't happen, Israel would, quote, face a South African-style struggle for equal voting rights, and as soon as that happens, the state of Israel is finished. You warned of apartheid 15 years ago. Today, with the two-state solution even further away than it was when you were prime minister, human rights groups like Amnesty and Human Rights Watch, as you know, are now saying Israel is guilty of the crime of apartheid. Surely you don't disagree with them, given you warned of it. You only failed to mention the fact that in 2008, from May 2008, I proposed... Dr. Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian leader, a two-state solution precisely on the basis of what were the historical claims of the Palestinians. I offered a Palestinian state, more or less on the 67 borders. I offered uh, the Mahmoud Abbas that the city, the Arab part of Jerusalem, will be the capital of the Palestinian state. I offer that the holy base. I, I understand that, no, but right now, uh, me, do you agree allow with me, the apartheid allow me, description? No, allow me, excuse me, allow me to finish, please. I offered also that the holy base, including the Temple Mount, will not have any political, exclusive political sovereignty, but will be managed or administered by a trusteeship of five nations Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the Palestinians, Israel, and America, authorized by the United Nations. And I also offered to resolve the refugee issue within the context okay. of the Arab peace. With respect, issue. we're going to run out of time. I understand that you did the deal. It's a simple please. question. Do you agree no, no, no. that there is apartheid no, maybe, right now, maybe. as you predicted? You may, not, maybe. you may not be a representative of the Palestinians, but you are reluctant to listen to something which is not entirely... I just let you speak for a long peace. time about your peace deal. I know you offered a peace deal. I'm asking, in no, 2022, you know, you know, is there apartheid? They, Why do you not want to answer this question? It's a very million, simple question. Do you believe there is apartheid many, in the occupied territories in many, Israel, as Amnesty, many, Human Rights Watch, Yesh Din, Bet Salem say, and as you warned about 15 years ago? Maybe. You may not represent the Palestinians, but you are unable to listen to something which opposes your assertions. So let me say, first of all... I'm still waiting for an answer to a question I've asked, I've asked three times. Do you believe... Let let's ask it a fourth one, and then we'll move on. The Do you believe there is apartheid no, no, no. in the occupied territories? No, it's a I simple question. You could say no. Well, I'll address myself to this in a minute. My proposal, which may have resolved this historical conflict, in precisely the same basis that was required by the Palestinians, was never responded by the Palestinians. They never said yes to this. 
You failed to mention this, and I think that you owe it to the millions that view you. Now I'll tell you something. We don't have apartheid, but I don't think, and I, I, I don't have to disagree with all these different organizations. I'm not familiar with them. I prefer not to relate okay. to them. I say we don't have apartheid. We are far from it. But the, the uh, Palestinians in the territories can appeal to the Israeli Supreme Court, and they do it almost on a daily basis, and they win many times cases against the Israeli government, which is not apartheid. But if you ask me, I say it in the most explicit way. We need to pull out of the territories within the context of an agreement with the Palestinians that they will recognize the state of Israel and that we will allow them to exercise their fundamental okay. rights for self-determination. And I still Let's... wait for a courageous Palestinian leader that will have the courage, determination, the firmness to okay. go ahead for it. The, the, and with the, division the, the problem with the Palestinians, we have to move on. To Okay, we have to. The problem is you're not mentioning that the current Prime Minister of Israel says there will be no two-state solution on his watch. So it doesn't matter what I, the Palestinians I say. I, Let's, I oppose I know. him. I attack him in Israel, and I'm in opposition to his uh, position. Okay, and I'm trying to change the public opinion of Israel to go good, ahead with a two-state solution. Good to hear. Solution. I was just reminding the viewers that the Israeli Prime Minister is anti a two-state solution. Let's talk about Iran. We're about to run out of time. Given negotiations are ongoing between Biden and Iran to try and resurrect the Iran nuclear deal that Trump pulled out of, you write in your new book, quote, I believe that President Obama's nuclear agreement, while certainly far from optimal, was preferable to an Israeli attack on Iran. And that is a view shared by multiple Israeli officials, military people. It's not shared by the current or former prime ministers of Israel, Bennett and Netanyahu, both of whom have worked hard to undermine any deal. Why? Is it because Israel, they want a war with Iran? Israel, you are again. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I can't be but amused. You failed to mention the fact that the problem, which I think the American government, both President Obama and now President Biden recognize, is that Iran seems to prepare a nuclear capacity, and they say that they want to destroy the state of Israel. That's the basis for our discussion. Now, my personal position is that I don't think Israel will attack Iran. I don't think Israel need to attack Iran. I think that there are other ways to deal with it. And I thought at the past that the Obama agreement was better than not having an agreement. I thought that the uh, decision of President Trump to remove him, to, to depart from the agreement, was a terrible mistake. And I hope that the agreement that President Biden is going to sign now will be acceptable and reasonable and will answer all the weaknesses of the uh, former agreement so that it will guarantee that Iran, as President Biden, by the way, made a commitment that okay. we will not We're almost out of time. time to have Iran with nuclear capacity. And that's what we have We're to almost out of time. I have, to, to, I have to ask this question before we run out of time. Uh, Ehud Olmert, you I, say I in the book, quote, on. Israel, you say in the book, Israel cannot accept a nuclear Iran. The Iranians say, well, we don't have nuclear weapons, but Israel does. They're right, aren't they? Israel has nuclear weapons. It doesn't allow the IAEA in. It doesn't Listen. follow the UN Security Council resolution that says open up it, your facilities. It, 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 and you hide the fact that you have lots of nuclear warheads. I just want to repeat again what I say, said before, which I think is the crux of the matter. Iran threatens to annihilate the state of Israel. That's what they say time and again. You made that point. I asked years. the question. The Israel has Iran, nuclear weapons, does it not? Isn't Rabbi, that hypocritical Rabbi, that you have nuclear Rabbi, weapons that you don't Rabbi, allow the IAEA to check? Allow me it, to... Allow we're out of time. I need an answer to, express, to the question. Allow, You've dodged I, a lot of my I, questions I, today. You are very nervous. Don't be so nervous. What I said is this. I'm not Iran the one not answering a question about nuclear Iran weapons. Does Israel have nuclear weapons, Israel, yes or no? Look, listen, I'm not under investigation here, and I'm not under <laughs> police inquiry. I will say what I want to say, and I say it again. Iran threatens the annihilation of the state of Israel. Is, Israel doesn't threaten the annihilation of any country, of course not of Iran. But we will not allow Iran to have nuclear power, and thank God this is also the position of the American president, but Israel and has no nuclear weapons, does it not, Ehud Olmert? Say it again. Israel has nuclear weapons, does it not? I, uh, uh, Mehdi, I am not under inquiry here. I told you Israel never admitted 
that it has any nuclear That's capacity. Convenient. And therefore, okay. and therefore, I'm not going to uh, say something different. What I said is That's that. That's very the convenient. The, the world knows Israel has world. nukes. The danger to the we will have to leave it there. Is Iran. We will have to leave it there. Former Not Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, we're out of time. I wish we had more time. But you, you managed to run down the clock on a few of those questions, but I appreciate you taking time out to speak with me. Thank you for your time.